Max. Ready? Good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for coming to a public meeting regarding the Somerville High School improvement. I'm Tony Parentazzi. I am the chair of the building committee. And uh, you may remember I was superintendent of schools here for a while. And it's a great pleasure to be able to work on this project that people in the city of Somerville have literally been talking about for half a century. Um, in 1986, when the vocational uh, career uh, wing was placed on Somerville High School, there was a plan to renovate the entire structure at that time. That plan did not pass the uh, voters. And uh, therefore, we are sitting in a building that the front of this building was uh, built in uh, the, literally the turn of the century. It opened in 1895. The room we're sitting in was constructed in 1929. So um, there are sections of the building that uh, date back to 1914. In the 1950s, a fire occurred on the top floor of the 1895 building. It used to have a beautiful mansard roof. Uh, when they repaired it, they put a flat roof on it. And um, then, of course, the, uh, there have been very small additions subsequently. And the 1986 very large addition, um, when the Edgerly building was um, taken from being used as a career vocational technical education building, and all those programs were moved over here. So that's a brief history of the building. Uh, the reason that the building committee was uh, formed initially is that in the uh, 2010 accreditation report of Somerville High School, several things were stated about what's called community resources. One of them was that the next time the high school headmaster submitted a report, they, the accreditation team wanted to see progress made on improving the physical structure. That, of course, has been done. Uh, two subsequent reports detailed the process that we're in. And the mayor and the, and the school committee established, and the Board of Aldermen uh, established the, um, the building committee that it is my honor to chair. So I'd like to introduce some people who are on the building committee to you. Uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, perhaps the most knowledgeable person, because he lives it every day, Max Nadeau, who's our student representative. Tony Ciccarello, a community member um, and formerly a member of the mayor's staff and, of course, a former headmaster of Somerville High School. Uh, Vince McKay, the assistant superintendent for curriculum. Rob King, the capital projects manager. Uh, Ed Bean, the finance director of the city. And uh, Steve Royce, a uh, current member of the school committee. In addition, there are two uh, individuals here who represent our uh, professional team. Alex Pitkin is, uh, lives in Somerville. He's a vice president of SMMA, Sims Maney McKee Associates. And they are the architects on the uh, project right now. And Chad Crittenton is the um, l representative of PMA. And there are no words for PMA. It is PMA, right? Project Management Associates. And uh, they are the owner project manager. So they work with the building committee, with the architects, and um, on bringing this project to a conclusion, um, which basically means the building committee has been charged with moving forward a plan and putting it before the mayor, the board of aldermen, and the school committee and then the finances of the project will be dealt with by the mayor and the board of aldermen. We, as a, um, as a building committee, don't have a responsibility for the finances. Clearly, we are cognizant of the fact that we are talking about the, the largest public project in the history of the city. 
This building currently has 396,000 square feet. And the plan that we are working on would downsize that slightly because we're thinking of uh, a modern structure that would be more efficient. So uh, we're going to have a couple of uh, sections to the public meeting. Uh, number one, we are going to have a presentation by uh, Mr. Pitkin. And then we will open it up for questions and answers. Okay. Thank you again for coming. Um, we have brochures. And before I turn it over, I just want to uh, point out that on the last page of the brochure are all the electronic contacts. The building committee is committed to being transparent. Every document we see, we post. Every time we get a, a, um, a document from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, who are the city's partners in this project, since they will be um, contributing a sub substantial amount of money, Every time we get a document from them, we post it. All of our minutes are posted. All the presentations that are made here, for example, this is being filmed this evening, this will be posted. So we are very committed, we are truly committed to making this process as public as possible and as transparent as possible. If you go on our website, which is basically the city's uh, address, forward slash high school forward slash, you will see that there is an opportunity for you to provide input and we get all of the comments to us as a building committee members. So without taking up any additional time, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Alex. Thank you, Tony. Just like to say, uh, Headmaster John O'Terry just walked in. He's also a part of our uh, school building committee as well. So I apologize for anybody who has been following this intently. Uh, as Tony had mentioned, our partner in the project is also the School Building Authority uh, from the state. And the process is very rigorous and very um, uh, methodical in the steps that we have to go through. So really, the, all the new information to really stay current in the pro uh, project, please follow and come to the School Building Committee meetings. That's when we present new information uh, to be voted on by that, by that board within the city. So this is a little bit of a catch up to try to bring people up to speed. Uh, since that uh, committee vote was taken. So the slide that you see in front of you talks about all of the alternatives and all of the different plans that we've studied. Uh, the committee has already gone through a process of eliminating the ones that really did not meet the very rigorous educational planning and program process that we went through uh, with the superintendent, with the headmaster, and literally met with all of the teachers and uh, department managers and department heads within the school. That brought us down to three more viable options and then just about uh, three weeks ago uh, on April 11th the uh, alternative 4B was the option that's before you and was selected by the school building committee and some of the steps that we've also had to follow through uh, uh, from a local perspective and also from a state oversight perspective is getting approvals through the Mass Historic Commission which also defers to the Somerville Historic Pre uh, Preservation Commission and so we went through a whole series of meetings with, uh, uh, with that body, went and we uh, talked about, uh, we're gonna just walk through really quickly the history of the site, uh, and then also what were the pieces on Central Hill which were evaluated, not necessarily to be historic, because there are really only two elements on the site that are truly uh, listed as historic properties, but which ones were maybe considered most valuable uh, and most uh, pertinent to uh, moving forward for the city of Somerville. And so, very quickly, um, the history of the site is really quite fascinating and interesting. You can see this again on the website. Uh, it actually, there was a uh, original structure was from 1852 and there was also a, uh, a church on the site. There's a plaque uh, amongst many plaques on the site commemorating that, uh, that older structure. Uh, the first school was actually the, the Latin high school in the 1870s uh, and then a different main branch of the public library was built over by the current high school and city hall. And then the structure that we're standing in today, uh, the original 1895 structure took center stage on the, on the uh, Central Hill campus. The wings that were added in 1914, uh, which really give the fa uh, facade its prominence. Uh, and then 
City Hall, some point in that time, had also taken over the old high school building, uh, and the wings from the 1920s were added, as well as the War Memorial, which currently houses the uh, library, um, the high school's library, but was actually at the original gymnasium. Uh, and then there were some fires in the history of the building. Uh, there is a wooden structure in parts of the, uh, this older portion, uh, and that took the roof, the majestic uh, hip roof off the original part of the building. There was another fire in the 1970s. Uh, and then in the 1980s, you heard Tony talk about that substantial addition that was put on, uh, which is the field house as we know it today, a very important part of the physical education and athletic program here at Somerville High School, as well as the CVTE programs, those comprehensive programs that we talk a lot about in our educational planning dialogue and discussion. But they're very, in this instance, they're very separated from the standard academic programs that we talk about, science, math, history. Uh, and this is what we're uh, embarking on a journey to create a truly comprehensive high school going forward for the city of Somerville. There are only a few schools like this in the Commonwealth, and it's really uh, an exciting and unique program and opportunity. This is a uh, plan that you see a lot. Uh, the bold colors, uh, the ones to keep an eye on, the green portion is that very oldest structure uh, really still pretty good and in reasonable shape, obviously because of its age, needs uh, certainly a lot of care and attention. Uh, and that includes the 1914 wings. To take and snap the 1914 wings off uh, would not make sense at this point. Uh, so the Historic Commission has, uh, uh, has agreed with that um, proposition. The, the blue structure was all of that work that was done in the 1980s. And the only thing that will be remaining going forward will be the field house and what is contained underneath that. As we, again, we start to resort the program. And then the 1929, the, what is called the, uh, the D-Wing, uh, again, the library, the old field house, uh, we're looking to see how much of that we can save because there's actually program space underneath it. Uh, and the facade of that is actually quite, uh, quite special and nice. So we're gonna make sure in our testing uh, that we can make that work. And that small piece in the 2000s is somewhat insubstantial uh, and is sort of easily uh, undone. So there's the whole complex as it exists today on Central Hill. Obviously really fills the site. Uh, one of the other things you can start to see in here, people have asked the question, uh, what about Gilman Square? That's a certainly a very important part of uh, thinking about the site more as a master plan. Uh, it's very uh, Interesting, you can say in the 25 high schools that we've worked on, we've never had a high school in such close proximity to both uh, the Civic Center and the City Hall and the public uh, library nearby. It gives the city just an incredible opportunity to connect uh, its, its most uh, important asset, its future through its students with those two uh, very public bodies. And so connecting those in a meaningful way has given a rise to a really exciting master plan. But also keeping in mind that when the green line comes, right, we're all uh, knocking on wood and the 500 people who were here um, just last week uh, can attest to the importance of the GLX and the green line, the Gilman Square Station, and making the connection so that we're not just talking about a back of the high school site, the back of our, our most public square uh, being just sort of a, a second-rate forest or a second-rate hill, but that we can actually activate the city um, going forward. And so here are the identified, the very dark brown bookends on the site, that is City Hall uh, and the library. Those are the only two buildings and structures on this site that are in fact historic. Uh, the red um, uh, squares are the ones that have been deemed important by uh, Somerville uh, Historic Preservation Commission, but they are not historic uh, and would, their fate would be determined a little bit uh, later in our process. So, alternative 4B, approved just a few weeks ago. Uh, for those of you who don't read plans, please come up and ask questions later. Right now, we are in this test fitting and planning phase where we're taking uh, the educational program that we spent so much time on with the headmaster, with his uh, staff, and with the department, and we're trying to make those space adjacencies on the connections between the educational program uh, fit into all of this. In the meantime, uh, because again, this is a process that we're working very closely with the state, we still have to actually test fit uh, two other alternatives uh, that have been 
uh, passed over by the city, so to speak. It's just the way the process works. It allows the state, who is going to be investing a major amount of money, to be our partners and to also evaluate all the options with us. So that's, that's why we're sort of taking this step by step uh, with the public as well. So the red uh, on this plan is all the new square footage. So the very large orange squares. There's the field house, the Broon field house, and the 1929, uh, currently the library, which will be repurposed. Ideal location for a civic amenity like the new auditorium or theater complex. So you can start to see this idea, city hall, repurposed high school for perhaps city programs, and then that his heroic facade for the 1929, uh, um, which was a very public entrance at one time, reinstated as perhaps a public theater as part of the high school. And then the new entrance for the high school will now be to the east of that structure, and then marching along to the main branch of the library, which is slated to also have, again, an addition and renovation uh, program in the coming years. And then one of the uh, major features is taking down those two 1929 wings, which were at either side of the 1895 structure, You'll have this sort of sense of vision through the site now. Uh, and then the large green patch behind the existing building, straight behind us, actually where we would be standing today, uh, would also be potentially a turf field on top of some deck parking. And this would tear us down uh, to the Gilman Square, hopefully the community path, which is obviously under negotiation with the GLX. So uh, this is a great opportunity to bring some flat surfaces up Obviously, the city is in dire need of, of uh, playing surface. It's not a competition field. This is not a football field. It's not a full-size soccer field. That just simply will not fit on this site. Uh, but it does give PE and practice uh, uh, opportunities here on Central Hill. And of course, a community asset. Uh, so we're also looking at this three-dimensionally, not just in two dimensions. Uh, and so you can start to see this idea that maybe when the 1895 structure, which will be a city project separated from the high school, uh, that that may have its old roof reinstated uh, that was lost during the fire of the 1950s. Uh, the uh, question of what will um, the design and the site planning along Highland Avenue and for each of these very important elements of, of entrance and sequence that we've been talking about, uh, drop off, pick up for all of the uh, various programs on the site. Uh, and trying to limit as much parking off the front of Highland and bring that down to that back side of the site as possible to help ease the congestion. Anyone who's been by here uh, in the morning and the afternoon knows how uh, very congested the site can become, and this would certainly help. So we're looking at a structure that uh, breaks free of the 1895 building. You can see we're working around the uh, War Memorial from 1929. Most of the school, the new building, will be housed to the east of this structure. We're looking at uh, a building that we're test fitting that's six, seven stories uh, tall. So it's a very tall building to work its uh, footprint in a way that allows for uh, an efficiency vertically versus the inefficient and long building that uh, the school has been working with uh, for many, many years. And then this will also tear us down to the backside and to Medford Street uh, as that also slopes down to Gilman Square, taking advantage of every square foot of the site that we possibly can. Uh, and then this is the view. Uh, you can see in red the existing uh, field house, and then you can see the structure adjacent to it to the east again of uh, some of the new program spaces um, as that's been re-engineered on Medford Street. And then we are building also to the west. We want to acknowledge that many parts of the building that you can't see today because of the forest, uh, maybe this image will show it a little bit better. In fact, uh, those are not very pretty facades. And so if we're talking about an urban experience, uh, a place where the children are in the building in library media centers or in common spaces and cafeterias, that that actually will need to express itself uh, to the west side of the site as well and to these field spaces. So we are looking at really wrapping ourselves around the field house. Just a quick snapshot, all these images will be on the website. 
it's just as again just talking about massing no materials nothing like that has been selected yet there's still a lot of discussions that will happen after our next phase of work uh, beginning in earnest sometime at the end of June you get a sense of the scale of uh, the existing high school and the new structure and the new entrance to the uh, to the east of you uh, looking at the existing uh, field house as it's been surrounded by program elements looking up uh, from the community path and from Gilman Square again there will be windows this is just a massing study looking down Medford uh, Street looking back down uh, across that new elevation what is currently today that little drive those of you who have driven this a lot uh, this those will actually still remain an access point for getting into the underside of the uh, field house and access to some of the CVTE programs and then again uh, the massing uh, showing the main entrance and then as that uh, fronts on Highland Avenue and then some kind of a representative entrance that might also right now we're targeting perhaps the student restaurant which is a very public space uh, that that might also help to uh, fill out that uh, entrance court as well uh, that could be a wonderful dinner theater spot uh, so that uh, the public going into the theater space uh, could then also come out and have an activity um, area as well so a very glassy uh, um, element that would be attractive to newcomers uh, to the building uh, you I won't read any of these bullet points but there were pros and cons uh, to each of the options uh, phasing and how uh, we're going to move the students about the site uh, is certainly going to be a big part of our next uh, uh, challenges getting into schematic design uh, where we actually move some of the programs while we're doing construction this option um, allows us to move some of those programs a little bit more easily than some of the other options so there are conversations about swing space and you'll hear this as you continue to follow the project swing space <coughs> modular classrooms uh, some of the programs may be housed off-site simply because of the tightness of the site the contractor is going to need a lot of lay down space uh, as well at the same time these things uh, we've uh, shown similar projects to the building committee so these things are logistics but uh, they can be handled and that'll be uh, our job to make sure that's well coordinated and thought through uh, last week if anybody was at the, uh, the GLX meeting uh, one of the uh, interesting challenges is when they finally make a decision to whether include the community path or whether we have to think about the community path down the road uh, we do have to account for where it sits vertically uh, right now they are talking about subsiding the path down to the track level and so or the platform level and so we're going to be uh, talking about how that relates to uh, the field uh, and the wall heights and some of the access points for uh, that parking and service uh, level underneath that uh, field component so hopefully these give you sort of a, a visual sense of, of where we stand with the project right now a lot of design and detail and planning uh, and discussion with the educators to make sure that the spaces are all in the right place uh, going forward this is a building that uh, the existing Somerville High School lasted over a hundred years so we're anticipating that this one will uh, serve the city uh, equally well so I'll turn it over maybe Chad you want to say anything about the schedule or I could sure. certainly take questions on the uh, very quickly, building I'll just as well over schedule and then we'll let you turn it over for questions so the um, the month of May is a very important one for the project uh, as Alex said we are really going to be test fitting uh, we're going to be dropping program space into the building uh, building committee meetings are coming up uh, May 9th is a very crucial meeting so if you are interested in providing input uh, certainly provide it tonight another opportunity will be that meeting on May 9th uh, after that meeting on May 9th SMMA is going to continue to develop the plan uh, the building committee will meet one final time on May 23rd uh, prior to the submission to the MSBA so this package is due from us to the MSBA on June 2nd uh, the MSBA then has a seven-week review period and it, we will go in front of their board of directors on July 20th uh, with a vote to approve uh, an approval to proceed into schematic design from the MSBA Board of Directors will jump right into schematic uh, that will carry through the fall uh, ultimately uh, November 28th is our submission deadline and will appear back in front of the MSBA Board of Directors next January uh, so definitely a critical time to provide input uh, certainly welcome any thoughts and feedback I'll turn it back to Alex 
Antonio, I don't know if you want to talk about the website and dissemination. So thank you. Um, once again, uh, you can follow us on the website, uh, which is uh, www.summervillema.gov forward slash high school forward slash and provide input uh, regarding the, uh, the project. So that's where we are now. Uh, the, I want to just mention a couple of things. Um, this is really the culmination of a year's work by the Building Committee, the Capital Projects Department, uh, the, the School Department. There were hundreds of people hours put into developing, for example, the education plan of the next 50 years. The process that the MSBA requires is that the building isn't built and then the education plan fits the building. That's in fact how this building was built. It was just kind of added on to over the years. The process that we are uh, committed to and are required to do by the Massachusetts School Building Authority is the educators uh, who had focus groups who were off-site with uh, prof uh, higher education educators, uh, a variety of people were involved. They designed the education plan, hopefully for about 40 to 50 years. The building must support the education plan or the Massachusetts School Building Authority will reject it. We can't just do something. That's number one. Number two, the, uh, there are certain things that the building committee thought were important. Opening up the Central Hill was one. If you, uh, when you leave the building, if you look to your right as you walk out the front door, by the way, that front door, that, that beautiful alcove was literally built in, in 1893-94 and opened in 1895. Uh, the, the date on it, um, which says 1932, I believe, that's about the plaque not the actual, uh, and if you look up, you can see in stone the date 1894, which was when the, uh, those stones were laid. Uh, sometimes I think about how many thousands of people have walked through that entry. Uh, and maintaining it, I think, in the, for the city in some facet was communicated to the building committee, not just by the Historic Preservation Commission, but also by other individuals when we had our, uh, our first three uh, focus groups and public meetings like this. It was communicated strongly that that building, having been there for so long, was a, a keystone for this hill. The other thing that we, were t um, that we came to um, regarding a conclusion about the overall project is number one, um, a school needs fields. Our physical education program and our students need areas. And the city, of course, as you well know, in a variety, for a variety of reasons, needs play space and free space. We, we have a, obviously a limited number of uh, play spaces. Another factor was that when you walk by or drive by on Highland Avenue, you, you have this beautiful 1895 structure, but if you think about what you see, you see car headlights. And that's because there's a parking row right across the front of the entire building. Uh, we were asked to look into doing something that would um, make this hill much more conducive to people rather than vehicles. And we took that challenge um, and came up with the plan you see before you. The last thing you should know before I open it up to questions is we did not come to this plan nor this site lightly. Again, this started a year ago. The uh, SMMA and PMA looked at 22 different sites in the city, both public and private, both state and city. And it really came down to that this was the best site to use for a variety of reasons, although a challenging site, to be sure. And when we uh, had our, um, our best attended public forum, uh, we had over 65 people in attendance. That was clearly the message we got from the people who attended that meeting, that this was where High Somerville High School, going back to 1850s, when the Latin school 
uh, was open, uh, which is no longer here. That building is gone. Uh, and they felt that um, having the school here was in the best interest of the city, the students, and the future of the city. So, any questions? Yes, sir. Um, first of all, I can attest to the process because I was at the meeting on the 11th, so the scrutiny that I went through. And that's the point of clarification I just want because I remember at that meeting, especially when before we got decided, we really emphasized that the 1895 structure would not be part of the high school be designated by the city or the school. And when we expressed tonight, it seems it's renovation, literally the wall starting back there, will be a separate project from the high school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so I guess that's, that's the point of clarity I want is yes. this building obviously has to come down where we're standing right now. So will this removal of and clearing of the space just come regardless of what the city decides to do with essentially the original 1895 structure? Mm -hmm. So the question is, the high school building project is not going to utilize the 1895 structure. So can, can, the, can we clarify what happens to it? Is that a, a good? Well, not even so much what happens in its purpose, but what happens in its renovation. Okay. You know, because clearly, you wait, cannot wait. simply leave that building as is. That's correct. Yep. All of this structure around it. So I guess that's from simply yeah. a project management and yep. construction standpoint, how do you remove everything around the building but don't touch it because it's actually not part of this project? That's yes. Okay, the clarification is how do you remove the 1929 wing and leave the 1895 wing? The fascinating concept is, and I'd be happy to show everybody after the meeting, the back wall of this auditorium does not touch the, the 1895 building. There's actually a chute where you can actually see the original facade of the back of that building. And it's beautiful. It's actually more ornate than the front of the building. So in, you know, those of you who know me know that I'm a little obsessive. So I'm trying to figure out why. And I talked to a couple of historians. What they told me was the building was probably designed to be viewed up on the hill by the trains going by. And I don't mean the commuter line. I mean the old trains. So. Um, and, and I'm not going to talk about the technicality. I'm going to leave that to the, um, obviously, the architect and the project manager. But in effect, the, the northern wall of this building that we're in doesn't actually lean up against or come into contact with the northern wall of the original 1895 structure. It's kind of interesting. There's an actual huge vault that's three stories high. And uh, I actually have some pictures of it. If somebody doesn't want to climb the stairs, I can show it to you. But in terms of technically, I'm going to turn it over to uh, someone who uh, knows much more than I. Somebody who's got to detail it. That's right. <laughs> so uh, taking it down, uh, some of it's exposed, some of it's not because of the corridors that do come in on both ends of it. So. Because we do have the field and the parking levels right where we're talking, uh, we do need to get that into the project. Obviously, the building needs that to also function. So there will be something in the budget. It'll be prudent to allow for that to basically secure that facade, make sure that it's stable, uh, supported, whether it's plywood on windows or something along those lines, something to actually put it in place until uh, Rob and the city come up with a plan for what uh, city programs belong in there. So that's really the, we will have some program in place for that. Yeah, let, let me clarify that uh, uh, just a bit. Um, this building is under the authority of the school committee. When the 1895 structure is still there, because that was the agreement we made uh, as a building committee with the historic
Preservation Society, the school committee is still in charge and the building is still under the authority of the school committee. My uh, dialogue needs to occur about what's going to happen with the building. But Right. Yes. Yeah. So the. Right, let me let me read. So. Right. So so the question is. What actually will happen to the 1895 structure when the new high school is ready to open? What's, what's it going to look like? What's it? Yes, from a structure, from a structural point of view. And I can tell you, uh, I am going to turn that over to Rob, but the building committee has committed that part of this project is not demolishing the 1895 and 1914 structure. After that, the building committee is not involved in the decision making. So I'm going to turn it over to Rob. So I'm trying to look into the future uh, as best I can. Uh, ultimately, the way I see this playing out, uh, there's going to be a process that takes place as part of the demo of the surrounding portion of the building. Most likely we'd be closing the building up at that point in time. Uh, to your question about what happens and when, the city's going through a master planning exercise right now so that we can get a better understanding of what departments need what kind of space, where should they be, the interrelationships between various departments. Um, should we have certain departments all under one roof? Is that, does that provide better services to the community? Uh, we anticipate being done with that plan in the next year. and. I'm being selfish here, but when I look at the, the opportunities that we have with that building, I think that would serve the city really well. So once we get through with that plan, we'll have an understanding of if we're going to use that building for a city purpose, who would be in that space? Then the mayor works with the Board of Aldermen and the school committee to get buy-in into that plan. Ultimately, during construction of the new high school, this building continues to be used. So we're most likely looking at 2021 when we would need to have a plan in place for the space. So, yeah, exactly. So there'd be a funding component that we, that we capture in our capital improvement plan, uh, planned use for departments in this space, and then a plan to have another contract in place to renovate this space. But it, it buys us the time that we need to figure out who's going to be in there and how we're going to pay for it. And it gets us out of the, the mix with the MSBA because it just yeah. clouds things. And obviously, the demolition of this will come at some level of functionality so that it's not, you know, that door is not just wide open. We're not going to have a building with no walls on the side and plywood in the windows. Absolutely not. Right. The MSBA will participate. Uh, to a degree, so the demolition of this building, I would put in the project scope because the field ultimately. So the, uh, the, the fields are going to sit where the demolition needs to occur, so it's part of the educational program, so we can demonstrate that it should be supported by the MSBA. Um, the make safe of this existing building may not be reimbursed by them, um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a very, very small cost in the big picture, so let's do it right, make it safe. Um, the question about tying the two projects together, we actually can't under the MSBA's guidelines. Uh, they force us to have the projects completely independent of each other because they don't want the high school project, which they're participating in 70% of something uh, of eligible costs, tied to the success of another project that's on the same uh, sort of community vote or what have you. If there were two separate funding streams. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good, qu good line of questions, um, and I hope everyone understood the uh, answers. Uh, I want to uh, elaborate on just one point first. Uh, Emmett, the Massachusetts School Building Authority guidelines require that separation. 
So um, it's not only that it makes sense, it's logical, it's two different things. Uh, it may be the city and the school district, uh, but also the, uh, the, the project actually would be stalled if we tried to commingle those. In most cases, even a school district that's building two schools perhaps at the same time, or maybe one a year ahead of uh, the other, there are two separate projects. Uh, the MSBA wants that clarity in case uh, something goes wrong or so they can uh, look at the finances very definitively. I, I just bring up the fact that when the new project is finished, which as you know is going to go up to all two feet of right. the existing 1895 structure, there's not going to be a lot of staging for the next project. So that's why my concern is like sure. the challenges that is, again, more directly to the city than the building committee. That's right. But that, that needs to be kept in mind. We don't want to bring the field that thing is going to be staging for a certain amount of time for that building to get Yep. We already had construction and stuff being done up and work being done to do it. So I understand the technical need to separate the projects. Mm -hmm. But I just don't want to see the city have to go through more work when the brand new field and everything is there. And why would we have to double it up and stagger it rather than having part of it, at least from a functionality standpoint? Yep. Uh, so that statement was. Uh, my series of questions was because I don't want the city or the school district to have to go through more complications because of the separation. When you have a construction site, try to do as much as you can when it's a construction site. Is that a good characterization? Great characterization. Thank you. Yes, sir. First of all, the plans you see this evening have no site work on them, so there will be vegetation. Uh, secondly, at its uh, April 11th building committee meeting, the building committee voted unanimously to make energy efficiency a priority in this project along with the mayor and the board of aldermen and the school committee's guidelines for creating uh, a city that's really as close to carbon neutral as possible as quickly as possible. So the architect has been charged with uh, creating a complex, multiple facet way of creating a building that's as energy as efficient as possible. That's in the the far reaches of possibility. In actuality, we are going for um, energy efficiency at the second highest level of a public building in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts called uh, LEED Silver, Lead Silver uh, which is what, for example, we built third highest. third highest, which is what we built East Somerville Community School to. Um, that means that uh, all the, the standard things, you know, water usage is cut down by the, by the type of fixtures you have. Uh, the energy efficiency of the walls in terms of insulation is very high. All of the glass uh, is both um, multiple pane and a lot of the glass is actually colored glass. So, uh, sunscreens are above large windows so that, uh, and they are, they are designed so that they allow the winter sun to hit and warm up and the summer sun not to hit so that it heats up. So all those things are, uh, in the, will be in the plan and then we will also look at extending the energy efficiency beyond that. Did you want to? Well, your specific question was also about green roofs, and that obviously that's to be determined as we go forward. This uh, building committee is going to have to evaluate a lot of those sort of plus cost factors. You know, those usually aren't in sort of the, the baseline um, estimating that have been done so far. 
uh, our Wellesley High School has a uh, 18,000 square foot green roof on top of that that was sort of added on and was beyond the reimbursement cost of the uh, MSBA. So those are all factors that have to be taken into place. And, and so. when planning a whether or not you install them or you accommodate uh, access to the roof, would you consider the roof being used for I think it's really critical that those are part of the programming process. Uh, so, and just using that one as an example again, students are not allowed on that particular green roof down in Wellesley, although there was a lot of dialogue and discussion. So there's pros and cons of, of uh, if your science department is sort of collected around uh, the green roof, then perhaps you can do green and sustainable energy. The folks uh, toured Quincy High School where we have a very small green roof with a green house and those kinds of elements where students can go up and actually take apart uh, PV panels and uh, solar hot water uh, arrays and things like that and actually uh, participate in sustainable energy um, and that's important for the students going forward. And, and I think there's another part of the question as well which is it's good that it's not polluting building, but I mean, the trees also sequester carbon, um, which is a problem with, you know, nature highway running through the city. Um, what, I, obviously, landscaping is not part of the building, the building is set out, but, um, but when are those issues going to be addressed? Well, we have to we have to budget for landscape and for site design. That's um, that is certainly a very important part of our design process, and that's going to be carried going forward. Obviously, as you can see, we're impacting a lot of the site. I know there has been conversation about the urban wilds and the the uh, trees and the forest behind here. Quite frankly, a lot of that is really stuff that is just volunteered back there. It's quite frankly, they're trees that are. Um, are non-native and invasive you know so in some ways I think is an opportunity to clean that up plant back as much as we can where we have open space and where we can impact uh, the environment in a positive way so it's, it's all opportunities at this point that'll be really going into the schematic design phase which will be will, uh, the next phase uh, one other factor that was related to the question about um, involvement in the design of the building in terms of energy efficiency is that uh, working with the headmaster and the staff here at Somerville High School and, per, and uh, Dr. McKay, we will be, or the, the architects and the project manager will be involving students in actual design work. Um, and in case um, you're not aware, the last school that the uh, school committee and the, and the Board of Aldermen and the Mayor built does have a section of um, East Somerville Community School with a, a, a live green roof on it. Uh, it is not a, an interactive green roof, but what we did was we actually put viewing windows in the second uh, floor hallway so you can actually uh, look at it. Um, so there are a variety of ways of doing it. Thank you. Sir. I was just curious, um, in terms of process, how much further the design will be developed uh, leading up to the MSBA application, and mm -hmm. what opportunities for community input will there be during schematic design? If any. Um, do you want sure. To sure. Answer? You, you have to do it. Why don't you yeah. answer it? Uh, Why don't you repeat the question? So right now we're really, the uh, so the question was uh, what kind of opportunities are there for uh, public and community involvement in the uh, final design, uh, both the ex schematic. schematic design. Uh, so this PSR process right now where we're looking at fitting the program, obviously it does start to really gel the perimeter of the building. So now's a good time to make comments on the website people a lot of folks have done that uh, I think actually we got a lot of reaction about one of the uh, earlier options for 4b where we were building closer to Highland Avenue and I think we all kind of heard that message that we should be respectful of uh, uh, the facades along Highland Avenue so we've reacted positively to that so going forward I think in this next PSR phase where we really need to be intensely dialoguing with the MSBA 
you know, we'll, we're going to come back to you and say it's been approved and accepted and now we're really kind of rolling up our sleeves and now there's going to be conversations about colors of materials and details and what does the interior uh, of the building uh, start to feel like, things like the site planning uh, exercises. Uh, the city still has to make decisions about the war memorials right now, uh, whether that's, you know, I think we're going to have to deal with the site along Highland Avenue, but how the city wants to treat those elements is uh, uh, something that still needs discussion as well. So there's, there's lots of opportunity. I would say stay tuned. I think it's going to be a very active and intense summer where we're going to really be uh, uh, dialing things in. The costs that will eventually go before the voters will need to be uh, approved by the MSBA at the end of schematic design. And at that point, it gets very, very hard to change anything. Uh, both internally for the city and certainly from the MSBA's perspective. So schematic design is that is that really all important phase for us. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. The uh, question was, uh, the stuff that's all in front of the library and the little parking area um, uh, in front of the uh, atrium to the field house, who does that belong to? What, what is it? There is a, um, the answer is, it's complex. Number one, there is a very small playground right outside the daycare center that belongs to the school district and is a uh, part of the school. There's a much larger playground that is closer to Highland Avenue and closer to the uh, memorial that is uh, a city park, a city playground. And then there's the area in front of the library which is uh, thought of to be library property. However, uh, we have investigated the formal property lines of Central Hill, and there are none. It's just one big piece of property. Clearly, changes would be brought before the Board of Aldermen by the mayor because we know, and, and the Veterans Committee Commission, because we know of the importance of the memorials to the uh, residents of, of the city. Which is why, if you look at the plan as shown, we are keeping the building back behind the War Memorial, which is really the formal structure of the front of the original gymnasium, the 1930s gym, which is now being used as a library. Everything's behind that. That is to keep the, um, what's called a line of, of sight, so eventually, uh, if you're standing on Highland, you will be able to scan the hill and hopefully not see those cars, as we talked about before, but see City Hall, the 1895 building, the uh, War Memorial, which was constructed in 1929, and the library, which is a 1930 building. You would be able to see all of those. The detail has not been applied to the Highland Avenue side of the high school, the big building that we are proposing uh, to the east of um, the field house. The concept would be that there would be some replication of period accurate type of either windows or facade brickwork or something like that to make it as the, um, as the members of the uh, Somerville Historical uh, Preservation Commission call it harmonious. Not, it doesn't have to be an exact duplication, but it, it shouldn't be, you know, when, you, when your eyes scan across, all you see is uh, the, the oldest uh, structures that I've previously mentioned, and then, you know, something that looks like a, uh, a skyscraper from New York City. So, um, and that's in that design phase, in the schematic design phase, where the exterior of the building is going to be um, designed. 
The other thing this building will do is, if you think about the high school now, it's a one-sided school. What do the corners of the buildings or the back of the building look like? Well, most people don't even know. And frankly, when you go back there, it's pretty ugly. So what we're hopefully doing with this project is making the, the high school and, of course, the 1895 building such that um, it's viewable and a, something to be proud of from all four sides and has access from multiple sites, which it does not have now. So um, just so everyone hears those comments, uh, first of all, the, uh, the uh, questioner supported the school being on Central Hill, uh, suggested, and there is a schedule on the website, but adding the, the, to that schedule on the website when public input would need to stop or not need to stop, but it, it can't be impactful anymore because uh, the paperwork is, is filed. Um, a question about the elegance of the design of the new structure, although, you know, there's, there's no design now. Um, clearly, I think the statement was you would like it to be elegant rather than it, inelegant. Um, the uh, Highland side of the building, uh, once opened up and once the parking uh, is removed, presents a great opportunity to the city. Uh, kind of, in my mind, it's returning it to the way it was many, many years ago. Um, uh, not exactly, but uh, as much as possible. Uh, it is a windy site, and we know that, and so we are thinking about some kind of wind generation, particularly on the north side of the building. Of course, there's a real updraft there. Anybody who, uh, having been on the uh, field house roof last winter trying to get snow off of it, I can tell you there's no such thing as a calm day up there. And then uh, the, the questioner uh, wanted to uh, extend his appreciation to the members of the building committee. <laughs> you know, on the wind side, obviously uh, putting a large turbine, um, like you see over by the power plant, uh, right when you're standing at draw seven, which we did, by the way, um, is not going to be feasible in an urban uh, site. Right. So it might be, and something build, building mounted uh, tends to have to be quite small. There's three turbines over at Harvard uh, University right across the river. Those are probably a bit on the large side and they're on a parking garage. So it's a, it's a structural detailing question and obviously analyzing just how much wind. So it's a cost effective piece, not just put up there for show. Well, I was actually asking about protection of the, of the playing fields. The playing yeah. Fields. But, I, but I think, the, yeah. you know, maybe you look at some of those small vertical. Yep. Yeah. Into, uh, the egg beaters. Yeah. yeah there right. Could be yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a. Uh, that's a, and it's good for the students and again for that program we want to tie that into the educational yes. piece. So. Yeah, we have an electrical yeah. program here in the uh, yeah. career vocational technical education. They may be able to build something. But can't guarantee that there won't be wind on that field. There will be, there, <laughs> there will be, be wind, wind There will field. be wind on the field. So. Yeah. Typ typically um, in urban areas what they've done in hilly, in hilly and windy areas is the cyclone fence ha can have sleeves in them yeah. that break and they, they actually now have done those sleeves in such a way where they create uh, cityscapes. They're quite, quite lovely, you know, not the old ones where, you know, they look like Venetian blinds, yeah. basically, stuck in the cyclone fences. Yes, sir? I think all those things um, 
I had my brothers as an architect, let's see developed once more. Um, because I think there's a great potential for a huge elegance here in making something that could live, you know, as a civic campus for the next hundred years. Uh, I, I, I just, just want to put my, my voice up there that I care about those things quite a bit. And, um, and I think the strongest image is this perspective view. And I'd be concerned that some of that is lost. So I see already in the plan, the Highland Bad face of the building is creeping forward, perhaps pressed by program out. Yeah. Whereas on this image, it's aligned with the back of the addition of the library, which makes much more of the space. So the questioner uh, supports the concept of having a building that is going to be here for a substantial number of decades that uh, visually has elegance and is concerned that the large um, new construction um, focuses on fitting into the area of and really supports the concept of a civic campus or a Central Hill promenade campus type environment rather than just a, a building that um, supports the program inside of it. I agree with that. I also agree that there seemed to follow from that, from you, what I sort of heard was that it need be, um, to have decorative and material affinities with other buildings. And I would just say, first, only speaking for myself, and it's not the most important thing here. Personally, I don't care. It could be very contemporary and elegant as well. Mm -hmm. Where I come from. But I think the big thing looking at the mass is how big shapes, sizes, elevations, mm -hmm. orient, step down, relate to the other big dimensions of the other buildings. And I think there's some great moments, but not every piece has been resolved. A lot right. Yeah. We're going to answer that. But I can, uh, the only thing I want to say uh, about the, the, the technical way that that question was phrased in terms of the design of the building is, this is going to be a large building. It, it really is, I mean, and I don't want anybody to think that it's going to be a two or a three story building. Uh, it will be, I mean, the way it's being designed right now is um, that it's back off a of highland and that it could be darkened to you know, relieve some of its visual impact, but it is going to be a big building. And with that, I'll turn it over to Alex. So you sound like you're an architect, uh, so you, you know, um, with this process, it's not as if we're a developer and I've got my beautiful image for you, right? And we can have those conversations. Uh, it, you're, you're basically looking at the sausage factory. You know, it's, it's, you know there's an interplay of, of modeling, of test fitting. You know, we are where we are in the process. Um, it's uh, uh, it's going to be iterative. It's uh, by no means are we proposing the images that you see before you. I can't guarantee that the steps in those corners will fit the program uh, today, so there's a long ways to go. Um, we are, you know, we're sneaking forward, you know, we're going to find that sweet spot of where we can be off Highland Ave and on the east side of, or the west side of the uh, existing um, field house as well. You know, we're going to take every square foot that uh, we can because uh, we're going to need it. Um, so we don't want an eight-story building, right? Um, and we want to make care. Uh, we want to be cautious about uh, all sense of the volume of the building. So, and and obviously we're not hinting at windows yet because a big part of our educational planning is also the interaction of not just cellular classrooms, but also the idea of the public entering into the building in a in a different manner. There are some retail spaces that uh, come with the CVTE. Uh, there is the the student restaurant. Those are going to be moments that will really enliven that facade. How we actually. Uh, detailed. We've got a long ways to go, and we appreciate the, the commentary and the feedback. Thanks. The, uh, that last question also stimulates in me the, the comment that we haven't talked about yet, is that we're building a four-year comprehensive high school that also will serve for many, many, many years as a civic gathering place. And this building that we're in because of the way it was constructed just adding 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 it's not a, it doesn't work you know this building will be um, will have areas that can be separated from each other for security purposes it will have uh, areas that people will walk right into 
to go to the restaurant, to go to cosmetology, to go to the uh, auto uh, shop, um, to get their computers repaired. Re whereas this building, uh, because of when it was built, you have to walk in a hallway. Uh, so the security is a factor and also convenience will also be uh, a factor. Clearly we're asking SMMA to do an amazing job of design and uh, the good news is we've seen some of those buildings that they have designed in the recent past. Uh, I believe about 25 high schools, modern high schools. And they take all of those factors and all the local requirements into consideration and, and do a marvelous job of that, which is why they were choos chosen. I also want to mention that both PMA and SMMA were chosen by the city in conjunction with the MSBA. The actual final decision to, um, to approve these two uh, companies as our representatives was voted on by the MS MSBA board. So uh, again, that partnership that we mentioned goes even to that level. Yes. Sure. The question is, um, the questioner knows a lot of work has gone into this design, but there is a question about the height of the building. How many stories? Are there schools that are that tall? Uh, how does it fit the, ed the education plan? And the short ans answer is, yes, there are uh, um, K-12 buildings, high schools that tall. Um, two, you need one, one of two different kinds of spaces and travel in a building of this size. Um, number one, you need horizontal space. So for example, when I was the superintendent of the suburban uh, community, uh, the building was two stories tall and it went on forever. Uh, another way of looking at this is you, you convert some of that horizontal space to vertical space. And we are very cognizant uh, the building committee actually had, has in his possession, a document that shows different designs, how many linear feet and how many vertical feet are in each design. And the design that's before you is one that was um, basically, I'd say, right in the middle, a little towards the shorter end. Is that? Less, less than half of the horizontal right. travel distance than exists in this building as it sits today. Uh, so by going vertical, um, and I'll let John speak in yep. more detail, we actually potentially cut down on travel time between classes. Yeah, and, and currently we, oh sure. And currently we, we do have five levels in this school. So we've got that five vertical stories to overcome plus, was it 891 feet from tip to tail and you know, one of the things that we that came up, especially with the student focus groups, was the amount of time it takes for students to pass from one end of the building to the next. We give them four minutes. I mean, it, it, if you're coming from, you know, the metal fabrication shop or automotive, and then you're going up to, which many of them do because of their curriculum uh, in the CVTE program, they have to take some of the business courses up to the fourth floor in that wing. It's a good workout for you to do it with nobody in the hallway in four minutes. So when you've got 1,200 students in there and going up five levels, that's a challenge. So we are compressing the linear part. Um, that was one of the things that we felt would be very important. Um, and, and students were quite relieved. I mean, when we had student focus groups, like, oh, good. You know, maybe we can get from one end of the building to the next in four minutes. Um, I think, you know, and Alex can speak to some of the um, architectural, you know, the things that would be built in, the fact that this piece of property is on a grade. Um, I mean, you walk in from Highland Ave, you're on the second floor here, um, down in the, the east wing of the building, it's a little more pronounced too. So we can probably mitigate some of that 
height so it doesn't look like a skyscraper on Highland Avenue. It may, I, I think that the, the roof line is not much different, but uh, again, I'd leave that to the experts. Oh, it, it'll be higher. <clears throat> yeah, and we, we did show that elevation. It will, uh, will, will be a little bit higher. Um, uh, you know, I think things that we're going to be looking at are making sure that the stairs are, you know, ex wider than what they are today, right? You know, you've got to make sure that that vertical uh, movement is accommodated. There's nothing worse than tight stairs with lots of students moving up and down them. We'll talk with John about, well, can, you know, should the freshmen be co-located up on one of the floors so that they're moving less? Because by nature, their programs tend to be, you know, uh, so we can move the science, uh, their science programs up with them, uh, which is very typical of what we're doing in modern, um, modern high schools anyhow. So we can do things to help uh, alleviate and minimize the vertical circulation across the program. So that's the goal. The question is, are you looking at how many sets of elevators would be required for the building? And the short answer is absolutely. Um, the building will have uh, access uh, requirements of all types, um, including elevators, including distance from elevators to uh, restrooms, including the weight of doors so they can be opened by someone who has disabilities. Um, and a variety of other uh, factors that all gets um, analyzed, viewed uh, for uh, acceptability prior to um, construction, any construction. Yes, sir. Specifically about the larger playground up front, I think I, I understand you said, you know, that we know that it's essentially one piece of property, and I think you were saying that during construction that, you know, if necessary, you know, that would be part of the project, that, you know, mm -hmm. necessary to phase of construction, or maybe you didn't say that, but um, is it, did you say anything about afterwards? I, Sure. So the question is, uh, what specifically is going to happen to the playground areas in on Highland Avenue? The short answer is, ultimately, nothing, because that area is not in the sphere of construction. There won't be a building on it. There won't. There is not planned. Um, by the way, the, sch the schematic that you see, for example, for driveways and things, that's just possible. Uh, it certainly hasn't been worked out at all. The site plan has not been worked out. We are um, committed to separating the entry, the main entry of the high school and the main entry of City Hall and the library a little bit to make it a little bit calmer in the morning and the afternoon uh, and possibly with multiple entrances to the high school that would help. So, for example, an entry perhaps from Medford, because I don't know if, if, you, um, if you drive around the high school in the morning or in the afternoon, you can see that this, um, most of our students are coming from the north on foot, and they have to go all the way around the building to the front of the building. Obviously, we're thinking of a way to uh, mitigate that, to make it A, easier for them, and also to, to make it easier um, in terms of the numbers of students going into a single um, doorway. But right now, there are no plans to change any of those. And the building committee would not be the organization that has that authority. They, they are the, the, the largest playground is a municipal play, playground. And any change in that would have to be from the uh, mayor and the board of aldermen, not the school committee. It's only that very tiny playground right outside of the daycare center that's under the um, authority of the, uh, the construction project. 
And frankly, um, my guess is we try to uh, make that larger because it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty minimal. Uh, that little playground is basically used when parents are picking up and dropping off their children. Yes, sir. So, so the question is, what strategies or what concepts are in hand or being thought about to make the Medford Street side of the property more inviting and more usable? And uh, I am going to turn that over to uh, Alex, uh, but we are talking about a, the possibility of a major entry from there along with steps, clearly with steps. <laughs> so, so we really look at it as, as two components. Um, the piece that actually is truly parallel to the tracks, which is defined as the community path, right? And as a, if you've been attending those meetings, you know that the, the bridge, the crossing point, uh, and the station are, are probably destined to not be built ever, uh, or at least not in uh, the scope of this uh, project's timeline. So that puts the access points to the ends. They're, right now they've shown a set of stairs at the School Street side and then a very long ramp off the platform up to the Medford Street uh, overpass. So those students will, or anyone coming off the train, will have to uh, come to the site from that. Now, if the community path is built, whether by GLX or whether we need to mitigate and show a path down along the fields down on that side, that is still to be determined because we don't know the decision on that yet. So that, that's why I mentioned that earlier on because it really is a critical point of answering your question. Uh, that said, it is very far down. It's not, there will not be a school door down there because you're going to be some 80 feet below the main entrance. They're, you know, putting an elevator down there to get into the school is not in the cards just from a cost perspective point. We will need accessible paths, et cetera. The other side is when Medford Street comes up along towards the uh, library. That's a whole other distinct uh, uh, facade, if you will that is probably going to have to be our service access point okay so that is uh, you know we have to identify places where tractor trailer trucks can make uh, this building uh, serviceable uh, there's daily food deliveries there's uh, repairs there's uh, the cvte programs which have uh, servicing requirements as well so the way you know the things that make the building operational and healthy and, and safe so we're picking and choosing our opportunities of how we can effectively move around. We want to be respectful and cognizant of the fact that at some point the library will have an addition, most likely off the backside is what we're anticipating, uh, something that was designed in the 1990s. Uh, we're kind of using that as a launching pad. But we want to make some access that's a little bit easier than it is today where you kind of squirrel your way up through uh, that parking lot at the back and, and do uh, make that as uh, elegant on the Medford Street side as possible. So. Oh, we're talking about maybe even stepping that massing back uh, as well uh, in our current studies. So a lot of work to be done. Uh, I was just going to say that I think compressing the building in this area, resulting in the tall building, is the right choice. But I'd be surprised if that didn't stay on as a question, a typical question from throughout this process. Bag at it, and it just seems to me that obviously to me, height, height could be an asset. You could do something amazing on the interior. Yep. Take advantage mm -hmm. of that height. And there's, when we had our last meeting of the, uh, the school, there's a height space that they utilize beautifully. Yep. Um, I just wonder when, I don't know, I'd love to see what the architect's strategies are for leveraging the height to do something unique. Yep. Not just as a problem solving strategy. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the uh, questioner's comments was um, he would uh, anticipate that the questions about access from Medford Street would continue to be, no, height of the oh, the height of the building, yeah, would continue to be a uh, question. And uh, for those of you who want to step up to this view, this view actually has an entry right off of the Medford Street side. and. Uh, I think it's a functional issue. Yeah. Um, school, what does that mean? We're not used to it. I didn't grow up in school like that. But of course, it could be great.
So, yeah. so we are, so we are doing some research on that, obviously. So, yeah, and to make sure that we understand the uh, ramifications. One thing that we would always want to work with the educators on is, it's rare that you see atriums in high school for a very good reason, right? So, we did tour Everett High School it has a shaft in the middle of it, which is just the most woeful space that you can imagine. It's you know, it's yeah. It's there's there's a space that's used on the bottom floor that yeah. goes up four stories, right? And there are windows to the space, but there's a roof on. It. Yeah, and there's no access to course, be in that space. You have to have in, in a school. You have to have fenestration in certain sites. So we're on the hunt now for things like uh, TV studios, which right. don't need any kind of, of exterior uh, windows. Uh, and, and as you can imagine, a hole in the building to create whatever a, a, an action open courtyard or even a glass enclosed courtyard that would be of scale and a height of that size, you're going to push us closer to Highland or it's going to make that footprint even bigger. So all those things we're, we're trying to balance. Okay. Uh, Vince? Yeah, I'm a member of the committee and I'll certainly bring this forward as this question forward as far as the group. But it sounds like the folks here would be interested in this question, which is. I think you made it clear that the War Memorial, the 2029 War Memorial, there's a desire to keep that as a monument. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not an entrance. So my question is, how do you balance yeah, no. the need right. for a right. visual cue for where to go yeah. where the, from Highland Ave? Uh, mm -hmm. where, how do you get into this new structure? How do you balance that with the, the need the, Desire to have that, uh, well, assuming that remains a non so well let me so so uh, Vince is asking the question about entrances and we've got this heroic facade that was once an entrance into the, the war memorial gymnasium and and so right now we're showing it as being reinstated as an entrance like we did up at the old Marblehead High School which is their PAC center PAC center for their arts so that the public can have that, that a lobby and a sense of entrance it would not be a student entrance because it's far away from the security. But then also where we were talking about the potential for the student restaurant and this idea of that active space, that there would be another entrance there. So what actually is kind of an interesting, yes, absolutely. So that, that right now is shown as just a simple circle, sort of a funny shape there, but a circle in the plans. But the idea would also be that the students have all the access to where the action is for the students. The stage, you know, that's where all the arts want to be, right? They want to be collected around the stage. We've been talking about that as a black box theater type of space. You know, the dance, the um, uh, different performing arts spaces. So the students get that, and the public gets the formal piece. It will require a ramp, though. <laughs> so, yep. Well designed. Just, just one small item on your comments. Um, even though there's not that many public schools or high schools that are Mm -hmm. kind of in the scale that you're talking about. There's also a lot of lab buildings that mm -hmm. are fairly, um, I think they're simpler in shape, but um, um, they tend now not to be really tall buildings. The road has a really big building. Most of right. the lab buildings are six to eight stories. And, um, they deal with the same issues of circulation as you deal with. Yeah, so absolutely. Where, where you're, uh, you're familiar with school design, we do a lot of university work, in yeah, fact. Yeah, so I, I assume that there's some pretty good... Then the biggest difference is as an EU group versus colleges and university, which are not EU group. They're, even though they're educational in our mind, they are not that. And so there will be different um, factors for the numbers of students who will actually be going up and downstairs is very different from a university. So we do want to separate what the reality will be inside the building from those kinds of functions. The uh, questioner stated that um, in the university world, college university world, uh, buildings of this height are uh, more, much more typical. And of course, they are educational institutions. So um, unless there's another question, I want to do several things. Number one, I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to remind you that our website is interactive. Please give us any comments you have. This uh, recording of this evening will be up on our website within a couple of days. And uh, I also want to invite everyone who uh, stayed to the, uh, the very end. Um, 
and by the way, thank you for doing that. I, I did find my photographs of the back of the 1895 building, if you are interested. Uh, and I'd be happy to share those with you. But thank you. And um, please stay tuned. And uh, more information will be coming um, regularly. And please check our website, because that's where things are really up to date. Thank you so much.